Hello all. Welcome to the lecture on generator differential protection. Let's see this arrangement first. Here you can see the stator winding. This is the stator winding and two CTs whose primaries are primary windings are shown here. This CT is on the neutral and this CT is on the terminal of the generator. Now this circuit is the secondary circuit of the CTs which are interconnected. So if there is no fault in the uh, generator or uh, if there is no internal fault in the generator, that means there is no fault in the stator winding, then the direction of current would be like this. In the, it will follow the same direction, the CT1 primary current and the CT2 primary current will have the same direction. We know that the secondary CT current will be in the opposite directions. So here as the primary current is in this direction, the secondary current is in the opposite direction. Here also it's in the opposite direction. So now you can see these arrows. This is the direction of current in the secondary circuit. This is the one. Now you have a relay operating coil here. This is a differential relay which works on the differential current phenomenon, which means if there is a difference in I1 and I2 that will flow through this operating coil. Here you can see that both these currents are in the same direction and I1 and I2 are same because these primary currents are same. So now this is ID. The current through the differential operating coil is ID. So from this circuit ID equals I1 minus I2 which is equal to 0 for normal operation. OK, so once again, I'll repeat two CTs, one at the neutral point and another at the terminal. Then the primary current, primary CT current is as uh, shown in this figure from left to right. It's flowing from left to right and both the directions are same. That means uh, from for CT1 and CT2, the direction of current is same because there is no internal fault in the machine. So there is no path for current. Um, there is no alternate path for current. So these currents are equal. So accordingly, the secondary currents are also in the same direction and their magnitudes are also equal I1 and I2. So there is no differential current through the differential operating coil. And we know that the, I mean, this these directions we obtained from the, we got from the, uh, secondary current direction. We know that uh, uh, by Lenz's law, we have the opposite direction uh, on the secondary um, compared to the uh, primary of the CT. Uh, now, um, because because these are induced currents, they are in the opposite direction. Uh, then, uh, in healthy condition, we know that uh, the primary currents of CT are equal, so there is no current through uh, um, differential coil, which is ID. ID equals zero and uh, ID equals I1 minus I2 equals zero. Now for internal fault, internal fault in the sense uh, uh, here, if we have a fault, uh, that figure, okay, this corresponds to the internal fault. So there is some IF. In this case, we know that uh, from the, this is the grid side, okay. Uh, if the generator, generator terminal is uh, connected to the grid, then this is the grid side. So from both these sides, the fault current will be supplied. So the current direction has reversed at the terminal side. So IF2 is reversed, but, but IF1 follows the same direction. Now, accordingly, the secondary current of CT2 is changed because uh, primary current is changed. So accordingly, the secondary current is changed. So now the direction of IF1 and IF2 here uh, it is like this. Uh, this follows the earlier direction itself. Uh, the previous uh, in the in the previous uh, uh, diagram, this one, the same direction. I I F one follows the same direction, but I two is reversed. So here I F two is reversed. So now we have the differential coil current as I D equals I F one plus I F two. I F one plus I F two. Okay. Now, so there is a differential coil current if there is an internal fault. And if this magnitude of ID 
is that is the sensed magnitude of id is greater than the setting id setting then the relay will issue a trip signal to the circuit breaker to isolate the generator for clearing the fault now what happens if the fault is at the terminal at the terminal in the sense if if it's not in the machine rather it's an external fault so the fault is here okay uh, let's see uh, that diagram here is a fault this is an external fault okay now external fault in the sense um, the fault current will be supplied from the grid from the right side it will be supplied and here the direction will be same the primary ct1 current and primary ct2 currents uh, they are in the same direction because uh, they are flowing to the fault right to the fault location uh, basically this current is also supplied to the fault so what about the secondary uh, direction current direction it is same as the first case here right this is what this is the one okay so what happens here is for external fault this is the direction now again i1 and i2 are in the same direction so what happens here ct primary current and ct secondary current are in the same direction implies uh, secondary currents are uh, such that id equals zero therefore the relay won't operate for this fault because there is no operating current relay operating current through the differential uh, coil so differential relay so uh, the relay won't uh, send a trip signal so it will not uh, it will not be active for the external fault it will not respond to the external fault but sometimes what happens is if a heavy external fault occurs because of the ct phase angle error or the ct ratio error we have already discussed about ct ratio error and ct saturation in the instrument transformers in the topics uh, of cts and pts so because of these errors sometimes what happens is if one of the ct secondary current uh, is different then i1 and i2 would be different which means the secondary of ct is not capable of reproducing the scale down current of primary if it happens for one of these cts then i1 may not be equal to i2 in that case id would be there and if that id is greater than that is this sensed id is greater than id setting then the relay will send a trip signal so the current through the operating coil exists in such a condition for heavy external faults okay uh, because uh, suppose we uh consider the ct under the saturation condition that means the current is so high right so that is why we uh, consider heavy external faults uh then so the trip due to mal operation may happen here because uh, these this relay is not designed for the external fault but still because of the because of some error in the ct the differential coil activates and uh, Uh, the differential coil is activated by the id and it it sends a trip signal so to avoid this uh, we can use a percentage differential scheme or uh, merce price differential scheme or biased differential scheme it's known as uh, we'll see here merce price differential scheme or biased differential scheme or percentage differential scheme so this is the figure corresponding to that so here we have another coil we have introduced a an extra feature here this is known as restraining coil uh, the importance of restraining coil is that this will create a counter torque the current through the restraining coil will create a counter torque against the mal operation of the relay suppose in the relay uh, if two contacts have to be uh, closed for the operation of the relay if we have a counter torque acting or a or a restraining torque acting against this then we can avoid the closing of these contacts so that is a concept here the mechanism is like this we have a contact we have two contacts here so trip and no contact if these contacts are closed then the relay will operate so if there is a heavy external fault then what happens is these two um, contacts will close but we have a restraining coil here this is an operating coil so if there is id 
because of the difference between I1 and I2, then the operating coil activates the relay and because of the MMF established by this current, this contact is pulled. The MMF, MMF, MMF is established here uh, in the core, whatever is the medium. So um, it, it will pull the contacts and the relay will be uh, relay will activate. But to avoid that, a counter torque can be applied here, right? If if we exert a if this coil can exert a counter torque at this point, then this could be avoided. So this is the restraining coil. This is what is shown here also. The same thing. The same thing is shown in this form. That's all. This is the restraining coil. So when ID um, flows through the operating coil, the MMF pulls the bar, right? If the relay is to be tripped, NO contact has to be closed. Otherwise, there should be sufficient restraining torque or counter torque, which will avoid the, uh, which shall avoid the uh, closing of these uh, contacts. Okay. Now, suppose due to maloperation, some ID exists, but it should not pull the bar for operation of the relay. In this case, the restraining coil comes into picture. It carries a current and the established MMF would try to pull the bar from the other side with a counter torque called restraining torque. This is the other side. Okay. Now, how much restraining torque is required? Which means uh, to avoid the maloperation, if we have an ID through the operating coil of the relay to, um, I mean, what should be the magnitude of ID for which the restraining torque should restraining torque should act. Uh, we should have an idea about this um, uh, at the time of designing the relay itself. So this is controlled by the number of turns at the restraining coil here. Number of coils, number of turns in the restraining coil. This decides the um, to what uh, value of ID the restraining torque will act. Okay, so for that uh, uh, we'll see a plot also here. Um, this is uh, vertical axis is ID and the horizontal axis is circulating current of the current through the restraining coil, circulating current or the current through the restraining coil. So this is the restraining coil current, this is the operating coil current. Now you see here up to a particular value of circulating current or um, yeah, up to a particular value of circ circulating current, the ID value is constant, right? Now, after that, it's increasing or it is actually vice versa. That means uh, beyond a particular ID value, the circulating current is here and this is the restraining region, right? And if the ID is beyond this point, then of course it will trip. Even if, even with maloperation, it will trip. So this is the tripping zone. This is the tripping zone. So constant setting is there till this point, right? There is a constant setting till this point, ID. So up to this circulating current, ID is constant. Hmm? After that, ID increases, right? So this is the, which region is this? This is restraining region. This is the tripping zone. Okay, now if this angle is theta, the slope is tan theta, which means this is DID by DIR. If IR is the restraining current, then this slope is DID by DIR. Okay, in, in this operating region only, okay, in this operating region only, it is DID by DIR. That means for what change of IR, uh, the, the corresponding change in ID or vice versa. Okay, this is kind of sensitivity, kind of sensitivity of um, the relay uh, to produce counter torque, to produce restraining torque. Okay, so this is the restraining region and this is the tripping zone. Now, we'll move on to numerical relay in the next lecture. Thank you.